Pavo Nermi, Wikipedia article audio. Pavo Johannes Nermi, 13 June 1897 October 2, 1973 was a Finnish middle and long distance runner. He was nicknamed the Flying Finn as he dominated distance running in the early 20th century. Nermi set 22 official world records at distances between 1,500 meters and 20 kilometers, and won nine gold and three silver medals in his 12 events in the Olympic Games. At his peak, Nermi was undefeated at distances from 800 m upwards for 121 races. Throughout his 14-year career, he remained unbeaten in cross-country events and the 10,000 m. Early Life Olympic Career 1920-1924 Olympics U.S. Tour and 1928 Olympics Move to Longer Distances 1932 Olympics and Later Career Later Life Personal life and public image Legacy Career summary Seasons Events Olympics World records IAAF ratified Unofficial Bibliography Born into a working class family Nermi left school at 12 to provide for his family. In 1912, he was inspired by the Olympic feats of Hans Kalamainen and began developing a strict training program. Nermi started to flourish during his military service, setting national records en route to his international debut at the 1920 Summer Olympics. After a silver medal in the 5000 M, he took gold in the 10,000 M and the cross-country events. In 1923, Nermi became the first, and so far only, runner to hold the world record in the mile, the 5,000 M and the 10,000 M races at the same time. He went on to set new world records for the 1,500 M and the 5,000 M with just an hour between the races, and take gold medals in the distances in less than two hours at the 1924 Olympics. Seemingly untouched by the Paris heat wave, Nermi won all his races and returned home with five gold medals, but embittered, as Finnish officials had refused to enter him for the 10,000 M. Struggling with injuries and motivation issues after his exhaustive U.S. tour in 1925, Nermi found his longtime rivals Vil Ritola and Edvin White ever more serious challengers. At the 1928 Summer Olympics, Nermi recaptured the 10,000 M title but was beaten for the gold in the 5,000 M and the 3,000 M steeplechase. He then turned his attention to longer distances, breaking the world records for events such as the one hour run and the 25 mile marathon. Nermi intended to end his career with a marathon gold medal, as his idol Kalamainen had done. In a controversial case that strained Finland-Sweden relations and sparked an inter-IAAF battle, Nermi was suspended before the 1932 Games by an IAAF council that questioned his amateur status. Two days before the opening ceremonies, the council rejected his entries. Although he was never declared a professional, Nermi's suspension became definite in 1934 and he retired from running. Nermi later coached Finnish runners, raised funds for Finland during the Winter War, and worked as a haberdasher, building contractor and share trader, eventually becoming one of Finland's richest people. In 1952, he was the lighter of the Olympic flame at the Summer Olympics in Helsinki. Nermi's speed and elusive personality spawned nicknames such as the Phantom Finn, while his achievements, training methods and running style influenced future generations of middle and long-distance runners. 
Nermi, who rarely ran without a stopwatch in his hand, has been credited for introducing the even pace strategy and analytic approach to running, and for making running a major international sport. Nermi was born in Turku, Finland, to carpenter Johan Frederick Nermi and his wife Matilda Wilhelmi in Elaine. Nermi's siblings, Siiri, Sara, Marti, and Laja, were born in 1898, 1902, 1905, and 1908, respectively. In 1903, the Nermi family moved from Ronisjula into a 40 square meter apartment in central Turku, where Pavo Nermi would live until 1932. The young Nermi and his friends were inspired by the English long distance runner Alfred Shrub. They regularly ran or walked six kilometers to swim in Ruiz Salo, and back, sometimes twice a day. By the age of 11, Nermi ran the 1,500 meters in 502. Nermi's father Johan died in 1910 and his sister Laja a year later. The family struggled financially, renting out their kitchen to another family and living in a single room. Nermi, a talented student, left school to work as an errand boy for a bakery. Although he stopped running actively, he got plenty of exercise pushing heavy carts up the steep slopes in Turku. He later credited these climbs for strengthening his back and leg muscles. At 15, Nermi rekindled his interest in athletics after being inspired by the performances of Hans Kalamainen, who was said to have run Finland onto the map of the world at the 1912 Summer Olympics. He bought his first pair of sneakers a few days later. Nermi trained primarily by doing cross-country running in the summers and cross-country skiing in the winters. In 1914, Nermi joined the sports club to run Erhi Luliato and won his first race on the 3,000 meters. Two years later, he revised his training program to include walking, sprints, and calisthenics. He continued to provide for his family through his new job at the About Age Alberg and CO workshop in Turku, where he worked until he started his military service at a machine gun company in the Pori Brigade in April 1919. During the Finnish Civil War in 1918, Nermi remained politically passive and concentrated on his work and his Olympic ambitions. After the war, he decided not to join the newly founded Finnish Workers' Sports Federation, but wrote articles for the Federation's chief organ and criticized the discrimination against many of his fellow workers and athletes. In the army, Nermi quickly impressed in the athletic competitions, while others marched, Nermi ran the whole distances with a rifle on his shoulder and a backpack full of sand. Nermi's stubbornness caused him difficulties with his non-commissioned officers, but he was favored by the superior officers, despite his refusal to take the soldier's oath. As the unit commander Hugo Osterman was a known sports aficionado, Nermi and few other athletes were given free time to practice. Nermi improvised new training methods in the army barracks, he ran behind trains, holding on to the rear bumper, to stretch his stride, and used heavy iron-clad army boots to strengthen his legs. Nermi soon began setting personal bests and got close for the Olympic selection. In March 1920, he was promoted to corporal. On May 29, 1920, he set his first national record on the 3000M and went on to win the 1500M and the 5000M at the Olympic trials in July. Nermi made his international debut in August at the 1920 Summer Olympics in Antwerp, Belgium. He took his first medal by finishing second to Frenchman Joseph Guillemot in the 5000M. This would remain the only time that Nermi lost to a non-Finnish runner in the Olympics. 
He went on to win gold medals in his other three events, the 10,000m, sprinting past Guillemot on the final curve and improving his personal best by over a minute, the cross-country race, beating Sweden's Eric Backman, and the cross-country team event where he helped Heike Liamateanen and Teter Koskeniemi defeat the British and Swedish teams. Nermi's success brought electric lighting and running water for his family in Turku. Nermi, however, was given a scholarship to study at the Tialisuiskoolu Industrial School in Helsinki. Buoyed by his defeat to Guillemot, Nermi's races became a series of experiments which he analyzed meticulously. Previously known for his blistering pace on the first few laps, Nermi started to carry a stopwatch and spread his efforts more uniformly over the distance. He aimed to perfect his technique and tactics to a point where the performances of his rivals would be rendered meaningless. Nermi set his first world record on the 10,000m in Stockholm in 1921. In 1922, he broke the world records for the 2,000m the 3000M and the 5000M. A year later, Nermi added the records for the 1500M and the mile. His feat of holding the world records for the mile, the 5000M and the 10000M at the same time has not been matched by any other athlete before or since. Nermi also tested his speed in the 800M, winning the 1923 Finnish Championships with a new national record. After excelling in mathematics, Nermi graduated as an engineer in 1923 and returned home to prepare for the upcoming Olympic Games. Nermi's trip to the 1924 Summer Olympics was endangered by a knee injury in the spring of 1924, but he recovered and resumed training twice a day. On June 19, Nermi tried out the 1924 Olympic schedule at the Elaine Tarha Stadium in Helsinki by running the 1500M and the 5000M inside an hour, setting new world records for both distances. In the 1500M final at the Olympics in Paris, Nermi ran the first 800M almost three seconds faster. His only challenger, Ray Watson of the United States, gave up before the last lap and Nermi was able to slow down and coast to victory ahead of Willie Scherer, H.B. Stallard and Douglas Lowe, still breaking the Olympic record by three seconds. The 5000M final started in less than two hours, and Nermi faced a tough challenge from countryman Vil Ritola who had already won the 3000M steeplechase and the 10,000M. Ritola and Edvin White figured that Nermi must be tired and tried to burn him off by running at world record pace. Realizing that he was now racing the two men and not the clock, Nermi tossed his stopwatch onto the grass. The Finns later passed the Swede as his pace faded and continued their duel. On the home straight, Ritola sprinted from the outside but Nermi increased his pace to keep his rival a meter behind. In the cross-country events, the heat of 45 degrees Celsius, caused all but 15 of the 38 competitors to abandon the race. Eight finishers were taken away on stretchers. One athlete began to run in tiny circles after reaching the stadium until setting off into the stands and knocking himself unconscious. Early leader White was among those who blacked out along the course, and was incorrectly reported to have died at the hospital. Nermi exhibited only slight signs of exhaustion after beating Ritola to the win by nearly a minute and a half. As Finland looked to have lost the team medal, the disoriented Lia Mateanen staggered into the stadium, but was barely moving forward. An athlete ahead of him fainted 50 meters from the finish, and Liamateanen stopped and tried to find his way off the track, thinking he had reached the finish line. 
After having ignored shouts and kept the spectators in suspense for a while, he turned into the right direction, realized his situation and reached the finish in 12th place and secured team gold. Those present at the stadium were shocked by what they had witnessed, and Olympic officials decided to ban cross-country running from future games. In the 3000M team race on the next day, Nermi and Ritola again finished first and second, and Elias Katz secured the gold medal for the Finnish team by finishing fifth. Nermi had won five gold medals in five events, but he left the games embittered as the Finnish officials had allocated races between their star runners and prevented him from defending his title in the 10,000M, the distance that was dearest to him. After returning to Finland, Nermi set a 10,000M world record that would last for almost 13 years. He now held the 1,500M, the mile, the 3,000M, the 5,000M and the 10,000M world records simultaneously. In early 1925, Nermi embarked on a widely publicized tour of the United States. He competed in 55 events during a five-month period, starting at a sold-out Madison Square Garden on January 6. His debut was a copy of his feats in Helsinki and Paris. Nermi defeated Joire and Lloyd Hahn to win the mile and Ritola to win the 5000M, again setting new world records for both distances. Nermi broke 10 more indoor world records in regular events and set several new best times for rarer distances. He won 51 of the events, abandoned one race and lost two handicap races along with his final event, a half-mile race at the Yankee Stadium, where he finished second to American track star Alan Helfrich. Helfrich's victory ended Nermi's 121 race four-year win streak and individual scratch races at distances from 800m upwards. Although he hated losing more than anything, Nermi was the first to congratulate Helfrich. The tour made Nermi extremely popular in the United States, and the Finn agreed to meet President Calvin Coolidge at the White House. Nermi left America fearing that he had competed too often and burned himself out. Nermi struggled to maintain motivation for running, heightened by his rheumatism and Achilles tendon problems. He quit his job as a machinery draftsman in 1926 and began studying business intensively. As Nermi started a new career as a share dealer, his financial advisors included Risto Riddy, director of the Bank of Finland. In 1926, Nermi broke Wide's world record for the 3000M in Berlin and then improved the record in Stockholm, despite Nils Ekloff repeatedly trying to slow his pace down in an effort to aid Wide. Nermi was furious at the Swedes and vowed never to race Ekloff again. In October 1926, he lost a 1500M race along with his world record to Germany's Otto Peltzer. This marked the first time in over five years and 133 races that Nermi had been defeated at a distance over 1,000m. In 1927, Finnish officials barred him from international competition for refusing to run against Ekloff at the Finland-Sweden International, cancelling the Peltzer rematch scheduled for Vienna. Nermi ended his season and threatened, until late November, to withdraw from the 1928 Summer Olympics. At the 1928 Olympic trials, Nermi was left third in the 1500M by eventual gold and bronze medalists Harry Larva and Aino Perge, and he decided to concentrate on the longer distances. He added steeplechase to his program, although he had only tried the event twice before the latest being a two-mile steeplechase victory at the 1922 British Championships. At the 1928 Olympics in Amsterdam, Nermi competed in three events. 
He won the 10,000 M by staying right behind Ritola until sprinting past him on the home straight. Before the 5,000 M final, Nermi injured himself in his qualifying heat for the 3,000 M steeplechase. He fell on his back at the water jump, spraining his hip and foot. Lucien Duquesne stopped to help him up and Nermi thanked the Frenchman by pacing him past the field and offered him the heat win, which Duquesne gracefully refused. In the 5000 M, Nermi tried to repeat his move on Ritola but had to watch his teammate pull away instead. Nermi, looking more exhausted than ever before, only barely managed to keep wide behind and take silver. Nermi had little time to rest or nurse his injuries as the 3000 M steeplechase started the next day. Struggling with the hurdles, Nermi let Finland's steeplechase specialist Toivo Lakola escape into the distance. On the final lap, he sprinted clear of the others and finished nine seconds behind the world record setting Lakola. Nermi's time also bettered the previous record. Although Ritola did not finish, Ove Anderson completed a finish sweep of the medals. Nermi stated to a Swedish newspaper that this is absolutely my last season on the track. I am beginning to get old. I have raced for 15 years and have had enough of it. However, Nermi continued running, turning his attention to longer distances. In October, he broke the world records for the 15 kilometers, the 10 miles and the one-hour run in Berlin. Nermi's one-hour record stood for 17 years, until Viljo Hino ran 129 meters further in 1945. In January 1929, Nermi started his second U.S. tour from Brooklyn. He suffered his first ever defeat in the mile to Ray Conger at the indoor Wanamaker mile. Nermi was seven seconds slower than in his world record run in 1925, and it was immediately speculated if the mile had become too short a distance for him. In 1930, he set a new world record for the 20 kilometers. In July 1931, Nermi showed he still had pace for the shorter distances by beating Lori Ledinen, Lori Virtanen, and Valmari Isohalo, and breaking the world record on the now rare two miles. He was the first runner to complete the distance in less than nine minutes. Nermi planned to compete only in the 10,000 M and the marathon in the 1932 Summer Olympics in Los Angeles stating that he won't enter the 5,000 meters for Finland has at least three excellent men for that event. In April 1932, the Executive Council of the International Amateur Athletics Federation suspended Nermi from international athletics events pending an investigation into his amateur status by the Finnish Athletics Federation. The Finnish authorities criticized the IAAF for acting without a hearing, but agreed to launch an investigation. It was customary of the IAAF to accept the final decision of its national branch, and the Associated Press wrote that there is little doubt that if the Finnish Federation clears Nermi the international body will accept its decision without question. A week later, the Finnish Athletics Federation ruled in favour of Nermi, finding no evidence for the allegations of professionalism. Nermi was hopeful that his suspension would be lifted in time for the Games. On June 26, 1932 Nermi started his first marathon at the Olympic trials. Not drinking a drop of liquid, he ran the old-style short marathon of 40.2 km in 2 22 on the pace to finish in about 2 hours and 29 minutes, just under Albert Mickelson's marathon world record of 2 At the time, he led Armis Toivonen, the eventual Olympic bronze medalist, by 6 minutes. 
Nermi's time was the new unofficial world record for the short marathon. Confident that he had done enough, Nermi stopped and retired from the race owing to problems with his Achilles tendon. The Finnish Olympic Committee entered Nermi for both the 10,000m and the marathon. The Guardian reported that some of his trial times were almost unbelievable, and Nermi went on to train at the Olympic Village in Los Angeles despite his injury. Nermi had set his heart on ending his career with a marathon gold medal, as Kalamainen had done shortly after the First World War. Less than three days before the 10,000 M, a special commission of the IAAF, consisting of the same seven members that had suspended Nermi, rejected the Finns' entries and barred him from competing in Los Angeles. Siegfried Edstrom, president of the IAAF and chairman of its executive council, stated that the full Congress of the IAAF, which was scheduled to start the next day, could not reinstate Nermi for the Olympics but merely review the phases and political angles related to the case. The AP called this one of the slickest political maneuvers in international athletic history, and wrote that the games would now be like Hamlet without the celebrated Dane in the cast. Thousands protested against the action in Helsinki. Details of the case were not released to the press, but the evidence against Nermi was believed to be the sworn statements from German race promoters that Nermi had received $250,500 per race when running in Germany in autumn 1931. The statements were produced by Karl Ritter von Halt after Edstrom had sent him increasingly threatening letters, warning that if evidence against Nermi is not provided, he will unfortunately have to take stringent action against the German Athletics Association. On the eve of the marathon, all the entrants of the race except for the Finns, whose positions were known, filed a petition asking Nermi's entry to be accepted. Edstrom's right-hand man Bo Eklund, secretary-general of the IAAF and head of the Swedish Athletics Federation, approached the Finnish officials and stated that he might be able to arrange for Nermi to participate in the marathon outside the competition. However, Finland maintained that as long as the athlete is not declared a professional, he must have the right to participate in the race officially. Although he had been diagnosed with a pulled Achilles tendon two weeks earlier, Nermi stated he would have won the event by five minutes. The Congress concluded without Nermi being declared a professional, but the Council's authority to disbar an athlete was upheld on a 13-12 vote. However, due to the close vote, the matter was postponed until the 1934 meet in Stockholm. Finns charged that the Swedish officials had used devious tricks in their campaign against Nermi's amateur status, and ceased all athletic relations with Sweden. A year earlier, controversies on the track and in the press had led Finland to withdraw from the Finland-Sweden Athletics International. After Nermi's suspension, Finland did not agree to return to the event until 1939. Nermi refused to turn professional, and continued running as amateur in Finland. In 1933, he ran his first 1,500m in three years and won the national title with his best time since 1926. At the IAAF meet in August 1934, Finland launched two proposals that lost. The council then brought forward its resolution empowering it to suspend athletes that it finds in violation of the IAAF amateur code. With a 12-5 vote, with many not voting, Nermi's suspension from international amateur athletics became definite. Less than three weeks later, Nermi retired from running with a 10,000 m victory in Vipuri on September 16, 1934. Nermi remained undefeated in the distance throughout his 14-year top-level career. In cross-country running, 
his win streak lasted 19 years. While active as a runner, Nermi was known to be secretive about his training methods. Always running alone, he upped his pace and quickly exhausted anyone who was bold enough to join him. Even his club mate Harry Larva had learned little from him. After ending his career, Nermi became a coach for the Finnish Athletics Federation and trained runners for the 1936 Summer Olympics in Berlin. In 1935, Nermi along with the entire board of directors quit the federation after a heated 40-38 vote to resume athletic relations with Sweden. However, Nermi returned to coaching three months later and the Finnish distance runners went on to take three gold medals, three silvers and a bronze at the Games. In 1936, Nermi also opened a men's clothing store in Helsinki. It became a popular tourist attraction, and Emil Zatopek was among those who visited the store trying to meet Nermi. The Finn spent his time in the back room, running another new business venture, construction. As a contractor, Nermi built 40 apartment buildings in Helsinki with about a hundred flats in each. Within five years, he was rated a millionaire. His fiercest rival Ritola ended up living in one of Nermi's flats, at half price. Nermi also made money on the stock market, eventually becoming one of Finland's richest people. In February 1940, during the winter war between Finland and the Soviet Union, Nermi returned to the United States with his protege Taisto Maki, who had become the first man to run the 10,000 m under 30 minutes, to raise funds and rally support to the Finnish cause. The relief drive, directed by former President Herbert Hoover, included a coast-to-coast -coast tour by Nermi and Maki. Hoover welcomed the two as ambassadors of the greatest sporting nation in the world. While in San Francisco, Nermi received news that one of his apprentices, 1936 Olympic champion Gunnar Hockert, had been killed in action. Nermi left for Finland in late April, and later served in the continuation war in a delivery company and as a trainer in the military staff. Before he was discharged in January 1942, Nermi was promoted first to a staff sergeant and later to a sergeant first class. In 1952, Nermi was persuaded by Erho Kekkonen, Prime Minister of Finland and former chairman of the Finnish Athletics Federation, to carry the Olympic torch into the Olympic Stadium at the 1952 Summer Olympics in Helsinki. His appearance astonished the spectators, and Sports Illustrated wrote that his celebrated stride was unmistakable to the crowd. When he came into view, waves of sound began to build throughout the stadium, rising to a roar, then to a thunder. When the national teams, assembled in formation on the infield, saw the flowing figure of Nermi, they broke ranks like excited school children dashing toward the edge of the track. After lighting the flame in the Olympic cauldron, Nermi passed the torch to his idol Kalamainen, who lighted the beacon in the tower. In the cancelled 1940 Summer Olympics, Nermi had been planned to lead a group of 50 Finnish gold medal winners. Nermi felt that he got too much credit as an athlete and too little as a businessman, but his interest in running never died. He even returned to the track himself a few times. In 1946, he faced his old rival Edvin White in Stockholm in a benefit for the victims of the Greek Civil War. Nermi ran for the last time on February 18, 1966 at the Madison Square Garden, invited by the New York Athletic Club. In 1962, Nermi predicted that welfare countries would start to struggle in the distance events, the higher the standard of living in a country, the weaker the results often are in the events which call for work and trouble. 
I would like to warn this new generation, do not let this comfortable life make you lazy. Do not let the new means of transport kill your instinct for physical exercise. Too many young people get used to driving in a car even for small distances. In 1966, he took the microphone in front of 300 sports club guests and criticized the state of distance running in Finland, reproaching the sports executives as publicity seekers and tourists, and demanding athletes sacrifice everything to accomplish something. Nermi lived to see the renaissance of Finnish running in the 1970s, led by athletes such as the 1972 Olympic gold medalists Lasse Viren and Pekka Vesela. He had complimented the running style of Viren, and advised Vesela to concentrate on Kipchoge Kano. Although he accepted an invitation from President Lyndon B. Johnson to revisit the White House in 1964, Nermi lived a very secluded life until the late 1960s when he began granting some press interviews. On his 70th birthday, Nermi agreed to an interview for EEL, Finland's national public broadcasting company, only after learning that President Kekkonen would act as the interviewer. Suffering from health problems, with at least one heart attack, a stroke, and failing eyesight, Nermi at times spoke bitterly about sports, calling it a waste of time compared to science and art. He died in 1973 in Helsinki and was given a state funeral. Kekkonen attended the funeral and praised Nermi, people explore the horizons for a successor. But none comes and none will, for his class is extinguished with him. At the request of Nermi, who enjoyed classical music and played the violin, Constagilha Sve Nut Viola was played during the ceremony. Nermi's last record fell in 1996, his 1925 world record for the indoor 2000M lasted as the Finnish national record for 71 years. Nermi was married to socialite Sylvie Loxanen from 1932 to 1935. Loxanen, who was not interested in athletics, opposed Nermi raising their newborn son Matty to be a runner and stated to the Associated Press in 1933, his concentration on athletics at last forced me to go to the judge for a divorce. Matty Nermi did become a middle-distance runner and later a self-made businessman. Nermi's relationship with his son was termed uneasy. Matty admired his father more as a businessman than as an athlete, and the two never discussed his running career. As a runner, Matty was at his best in the 3000M, where he equaled his father's time. In the famous race on July 11, 1957 when the 3 Olavis broke the world record for the 1500 M, Matty Nermi finished a distant ninth with his personal best, 2.2 seconds slower than his father's world record from 1924. Hollywood actress Mela Nermi, best known as the horror icon Vampira, was often referred to as Pavo Nermi's niece. However, the kinship is not supported by official documents. Nermi enjoyed the Finnish sports massage and sauna bathing traditions, crediting the Finnish sauna for his performances during the Paris heat wave in 1924. He had a versatile diet, although he had practiced vegetarianism between the ages of 15 and 21. Nermi, who identified as neurasthenic, was known to be taciturn, stony-faced, and stubborn. He was not believed to have had any close friends, but he had occasionally socialized and showed his sarcastic sense of humor among the small circles he knew. Acclaimed the biggest sporting figure in the world at his peak, Nermi was averse to publicity and the media, stating later on his 75th birthday, Worldly fame and reputation are worth less than a rotten lingonberry.
French journalist Gabriel Hanot questioned Nermi's intensive approach to sports and wrote in 1924 that Nermi is ever more serious, reserved, concentrated, pessimistic, fanatic. There is such coldness in him and his self-control is so great that never for a moment does he show his feelings. Some contemporary Finns nicknamed him Suri Vakanija, and Ron Clark noted that Nermi's persona remained a mystery even to Finnish runners and journalists, even to them, he was never quite real. He was enigmatic, sphinx-like, a god in a cloud. It was as if he was all the time playing a role in a drama. Nermi was more responsive to his fellow athletes than to the media. He exchanged ideas with sprinter Charlie Paddock and even trained with his rival Otto Peltzer. Nermi told Peltzer to forget his opponents, conquering yourself is the greatest challenge of an athlete. Nermi was known to emphasize the importance of psychological strength, mind is everything, muscle, pieces of rubber. All that I am, I am because of my mind. Regarding Nermi's track antics, Peltzer found that in his impenetrability he was a Buddha gliding on the track. Stop watch in hand, lap after lap, he ran towards the tape, subject only to the laws of a mathematical table. Marathoner Johnny Kelly, who first met his idol at the 1936 Olympics, said that while Nermi appeared cold to him at first, the two chatted for quite a while after Nermi had asked for his name, he grabbed a hold of me he was so excited. I couldn't believe it. Nermi's speed and elusive personality led to nicknames such as the Phantom Finn, the King of Runners and Peerless Pavo, while his mathematical prowess and use of a stopwatch led the press to characterize him as a running machine. One newspaper man dubbed Nermi a mechanical Frankenstein created to annihilate time. Phil Cousineau noted that his own innovation the tactic of pacing himself with a stopwatch both inspired and troubled people in an era when the robot was becoming symbolic of the modern soulless human being. Among the popular newspaper rumors about Nermi was that he had a freakish heart with a very low pulse rate. During the debate over his amateur status, Nermi was joked to have the lowest heartbeat and the highest asking price of any athlete in the world. Nermi broke 22 official world records on distances between 1,500 m and 20 km, a record in running. He also set several more unofficial ones for a total of 58. His indoor world records were all unofficial as the IAAF did not ratify indoor records until the 1980s. Nermi's record for most Olympic gold medals was matched by gymnast Larissa Ladinina in 1964, swimmer Mark Spitz in 1972 and fellow track and field athlete Carl Lewis in 1996, and broken by swimmer Michael Phelps in 2008. Nermi's record for most medals in the Olympic Games stood until Eduardo Mangi Arati won his 13th medal in fencing in 1960. Time selected Nermi as the greatest Olympian of all time in 1996, and IAAF named him among the first 12 athletes to be inducted into the IAAF Hall of Fame in 2012. Nermi introduced the even pace strategy to running pacing himself with a stopwatch and spreading his energy uniformly over the race. He reasoned that when you race against time, you don't have to sprint. Others can't hold the pace if it is steady and hard all through to the tape. Archie McPherson stated that with the stopwatch always in his hand, he elevated athletics to a new plane of intelligent application of effort and was the harbinger of the modern scientifically prepared athlete. Nermi was considered a pioneer also in regards to training, he developed a systematic all-year-round training program that included both long-distance work and interval running. 
Peter Lovesey wrote in The Kings of Distance, a study of five great runners that Nermi accelerated the progress of world records, developed and actually came to personify the analytic approach to running, and he was a profound influence not only in Finland, but throughout the world of athletics. Nermi, his style, technique, and tactics were held to be infallible, and really seemed so, as successive imitators in Finland steadily improved the records. Kortner Nelson, founder of Track and Field News, credited Nermi for popularizing running as a spectator sport, his imprint on the track world was greater than any man's before or after. He, more than any man, raised track to the glory of a major sport in the eyes of international fans, and they honored him as one of the truly great athletes of all sports. Nermi's achievements and training methods inspired future track stars of many generations. Emil Zatopek chanted I am Nermi. I am Nermi. When he trained as a child, and based his training system on what he was able to find out about Nermi's methods. Lasse Viren idolized Nermi and was scheduled to meet him for the first time on the day that Nermi died. Hikam El Garuje was inspired to become a runner so that he could repeat the achievements of the great man of whom his grandfather spoke. He became the first man after Nermi to win the 1500M and the 5000M at the same games. Nermi's influence stretched further than running on the Olympic arena. At the 1928 Olympics, Kazimierz Wazinski won the lyric gold medal with his poem Olympic Laurel that included a verse on Nermi. In 1936, Ludwig Stubb Bendorf and his horse Nermi won the individual and team gold medals in eventing. A bronze statue of Nermi was sculpted by Wayno Altonen in 1925. The original is held at the Art Museum Ateneum, but copies cast from the original mold exist in Turku, in Jyvaskyla, in front of the Helsinki Olympic Stadium and at the Olympic Museum in Lausanne. Switzerland. In a widely publicized prank by the students of the Helsinki University of Technology, a miniature copy of the statue was discovered from the 300-year-old wreck of the Swedish warship Vasa when it was lifted from the bottom of the sea in 1961. Statues of Nermi were also sculpted by René Saint-Ennis in 1926 and by Carl Eld whose 1937 work Loper depicts a battle between Nermi and Edvin Wide. Boken O.M. Nermi, released in Sweden in 1925, was the first biographical book on a Finnish sportsman. Finnish astronomer Jirjo Vaisala named the main belt asteroid 1740 Pavo Nermi after Nermi in 1939 while Finnair named its first DC-8 Pavo Nermi in 1969. Nermi's former rival Vilritola boarded the plane when he moved back to Finland in 1970. Pavo Nermi Marathon, held annually since 1969, is the oldest marathon in Wisconsin and the second oldest in the American Midwest. In Finland, Another marathon bearing the name has been held in Nermi's hometown of Turku since 1992, along with the athletics competition Pavo Nermi Games that was started in 1957. Finlandia University, an American college with Finnish roots, named their athletic center after Nermi. A 10-mark bill featuring a portrait of Nermi was issued by the Bank of Finland in 1987. The other revised bills honored architect Alvar Alta, composer Jean Sibelius, Enlightenment thinker Anders Chedenius and author Elias Lindrit, respectively. The Nermi bill was replaced by a new 20-mark note featuring Vaino Lina in 1993. In 1997, a historic stadium in Turku was renamed the Pavo Nermi Stadium. Twenty world records have been set at the stadium, 
including John Landy's records on the 1500M and the Mile, Nermi's record on the 3000M and Zotopek's record on the 10000M. In fiction, Nermi appears in William Goldman's 1974 novel Marathon Man as the idol of the protagonist, who aims to become a greater runner than Nermi. The opera on Nermi, Pavo the Great. Great Race. Great Dream, written by Pavo Havako and composed by Tuomas Kantalainen, debuted at the Helsinki Olympic Stadium in 2000. In a 2005 episode of The Simpsons, Mr. Burns brags that he once outraced Nermi in his antique motorcar. <laughs>